Good day, everyone. I am Sazen, and I would like to make a small demonstration of my now mostly completed laser tag system. Some of you may be coming from my Hackaday page. Uh, for those that aren't from there, feel free to look into the description for a small referral link there. Uh, those that don't know what this is, is this is one of my longer running projects that I've been just working on and playing with for the past couple of years. Recently gone serious as I decided to make four of these beautiful, beautiful systems at once and give the general hardware and software a good overhaul. Now, the good news is that this overhaul is almost complete and I have decided that it is good enough for me to go on a small break while I have to focus on university related stuff. Before I would do that, however, I felt like giving a small introduction to my system, which I'm going to do now. First things first, as you can see, I've made the printed files multi-material compatible, which means you can give them a little bit more flair. Um, whenever you turn a system on, it'll give you a small indication of battery status. That's a little new as well. I felt it was appropriate. And as you can see, they have all already connected to the small Wi-Fi network. It's a Raspberry Pi hosted and thus the quite mobile and flexible, but feel free to use your own infrastructure. The only thing you need is a, a Raspberry, or not a Raspberry Pi, but an MQTT server and a system that can run Ruby. That's all. Now, a game, uh, I've built a game system. It's already running, and that means that these systems are waiting for me to do something with them. Uh, this one's a little different because the internal gyroscope is sadly defective. However, with the other ones, as you can see, if I pick them up, they can react to the changes in their position, and you can use that to determine which sets are active and which are just laying there to charge or something similar. It's very quite useful. However, you can also use this slider up top to now change your team. The behavior of the slider is fully configurable via the server, so if you don't feel like making it uh, team changing, but rather I don't know, gun changing, or oh, I wonder why I'm mentioning that. Uh, that is completely up to you. Uh, I've got four teams to choose from right now. However, the system supports up to seven with the eighth team, the zero team being a sort of spectator. Uh, that should be plenty for you to play around with, but there is an easy way to expand them to as many teams as you like. At 255, in fact, but even that could be a little more. Um, the system supports 255 players max due to the infrared signal that it uses, but I'm pretty sure nobody will be crazy enough to build 255 pieces of these at once. It was a bit of work, let me tell you, to get just four of them running. Uh, in any case, if all players have chosen their team, they can press on the top of their dial to select the team, as you can see, it changes the brightness a little bit as an indication that they are ready. And once all players have chosen, a countdown starts. Uh, I wish they were synchronous, but whatever. Each active weapon will then give a little starting tune before going back into the active brightness. And now you can shoot. Well, all right, that one's a fake one. Man. Oh, please, I did that a little better last time. <clears throat> Ignore that. <laughs> in any case, what you're supposed to be able to do is use the dial up here to select your gun. Now, I have three to choose from right now. You already saw the first one a couple of times, but there's also this beautiful one here, um, as well as a small pistol, which isn't quite as powerful damage-wise, but has a better... Uh, you know, take out time. As you can see, if I, if I shoot now and then switch from a weapon to another, I'm blocked for a couple of seconds. You see that mechanic in a lot of games, in fact, and um, quite frankly, I took a lot of inspiration from reloading too. If you press down on the button now, you'll see that the system is reloading, and only then you can shoot again. Um, 
You can obviously also enable infinite ammo so that people don't have to reload. Or, if you're really hardcore, you can give players a specific amount of ammo, let's say every five minutes, so they have to get a little conservative. If they run out of ammo, they obviously can't shoot anymore, and wouldn't that be a bit of a problem? Now, other things we can do is obviously shoot other people. These fancy glowing things aren't just there to look good, they are also reflectors. If I take this baby, I can shoot this person, indicated by a big flash, until they are dead. A dead player will obviously be indicated nice and stay dead, please, thank you. <clears throat> dead players are indicated with a bit of a whitish grey. Um, also, fun fact, the entire reloading and reviving parameters, as well as health, is completely configurable. You can have the systems insta-kill someone with a single shot, and then have a fixed three-second timer to revive them, or you can base your, re your revival and regeneration on, say, beacons. The system supports detecting infrared beacons, which you can make with a simple Arduino. So you can have respawn rooms and stuff like that, or a capture point, which I sadly haven't set up in my beautifully big room right now, so excuse me on that one. And you can also change when a player can be shot. So, for example, you can say a player can't revive himself three seconds after being shot and... Well, that way you prevent players from doing that annoying thing that some commercial laser tag systems do where they have a tiny window to shoot right after being revived without you being able to shoot them back. It's always annoyed me quite a bit. Um, <laughs> as you can also see, the game ended. Now, the game timer is another thing that is completely customizable. The Ruby backend allows you to do whatever you want. You don't have to use a fixed timer. You can do it based on kill count or other scores. but Feel free to just do whatever the hell you want. The system is well documented with the Ruby gem, in fact. Uh, so you should not, well, hopefully, should not have that much problem figuring out what to do. Otherwise, feel free to leave a comment on the Hackaday page or the GitHub issue asking for a little bit of help and uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, oh, one last note before I leave. One fancy thing I decided to add yesterday evening because I kind of felt like it was... A scoreboard and if I just whoosh over here this is the terminal output of the system and thank you for focusing there my friend oh, I would have been a shame not to be able to see this because each system has a nice little name based on their color don't worry completely customizable as everything so you can use your own names or you can use randomized names whatever you also get a nice statistics on kills deaths your damage done and received, so you can see, you know, who took the most damage, uh, as well as how much each player healed. You'll see that some of the players down here, um, you know, some of the players down here have a little more health. Like, this guy never took damage, but he still had 100% health. That's from the beginning of the game. But uh, apart from that, you can just keep track of who is the best of them all. So. If you do build this, uh, please, please leave a link in the comment on my Hackaday page because I would love to see what other people can make with this. I would also really, really love to see other casings that people come up with and other form factors because the PCB can be really fitted into anywhere. And um, <laughs> if you ever get around to getting crazy enough to building 10 of these at once and have a giant 5 v5 or a, a 10 pve or i don't know a payload system or something like that with a robot moving as a payload which is definitely something that i want to do just as an introduction uh do please document that send a video share it around because this is meant to be enjoyed by people not just me uh, not that i'm not a person definitely not a robot but you know have your fun with it uh, in any case, I do hope you like this little, slightly long demonstration of the laser tag system and that you hopefully are more interested in electronics because of it. Have a good day.